Hey everybody, my name is Matthias Palmersheim. Uh, I'm known in the Element Room as Tiny. And today we are going to be talking about open source observability with InfluxDB. My contact information is available at the bottom of the slide. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. I will be in the chat room for this talk, even though it is pre-recorded. So, who am I? I'm a Linux nerd in home labber, which means I spend all day playing with Linux boxes at work, and then I go home and keep doing the same thing. Uh, I also like pretty charts and good UIs. That was actually one of the reasons why I started getting into Linux was the burning desktop cube, and you could change the theme for everything. Uh, I'm also incredibly lazy, which is another, which is probably the biggest reason why I started to work on this. Um, and I noticed that installing monitoring tools was really easy, but configuring them and getting them to do something useful for you was really hard. I would have to do things like, oh, you want an alert when your server goes down? Well, you have to set up a postfix mail relay, or this uses a pull-based method, so we need you to open up firewall ports and hope they have a static IP address or a DNS name that's consistent. Uh, another thing is that managers also like data visualization, and it's helpful to explain to managers in terms of pictures what the heck is going on. Uh, they also don't like spending money, and a lot of the batteries included monitoring tools, along with being proprietary, uh, cost a ton of money. Another issue with it being proprietary is, is this is your company's like infrastructure telemetry, and it's on some other person's cloud service that you don't really know what's going on. Um, some people are bothered by that. Another nice, a couple of things that are just nice about having good monitoring in general is the ability to manage much more by exception. Uh, you're not worrying about is the disk filling up or manually looking for that or if the RAM or if you're using too much RAM or CPU or if Mercury is in retrograde, you're using machines to monitor these things instead of hoping everything's fine and not knowing or manually doing a whole bunch of checks uh, another thing is that it can help with troubleshooting you can look at like kind of global dashboards and we'll see this in a second with proxmox you can see is it kind of a physical host problem is it one of the guests in the machine is it all the guests in the machine uh, another cool thing is if you can give read-only access to developers they can see if it's their code or the server that's wrong i in my day job, we've rolled this out and it's preventing a lot of tickets where it's like, hey, was the server slow at this time? Now I can be like, I don't know. You can answer this question for yourself though, which is nice. So my requirements for this are, it has to be push base. I really don't like <clears throat> um, how some of the pull based methods work, whether it's exposing everything over an HTTP endpoint everywhere and scraping that or having to like keep things in a static environment. Again, I wanna monitor laptops and things that might not have a static IP. Uh, I also want something that's easy to manage. I don't wanna to have to manage a bunch of different agents. I wanna manage one agent. And I've noticed a lot of monitoring tools will have like one front end and or one agent for logs, one agent for metrics, one for traces. And sometimes they'll have multiple backends too, which is really annoying to have to manage all that infrastructure. You're doing this to make your life easy, but you have to do all of this really hard stuff to make your life easy. It's weird. Uh, it also has to be pretty secure. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with the meow attack, but a whole bunch of databases were left with the bad defaults, which led to all of the data being dropped and replaced with the word meow. Uh, I prefer things once they're installed. When I think this package is installed, it means it's installed reasonably securely for most people. Uh, needs to have pretty charts. It's nice to be able to have that cool giant monitor in the office with all the uh, dashboards showing up on it. It also has to be able to monitor the simple things like, hey, is this system D service down? Or is this server on? I've noticed some of the more modern tools uh, getting a dead man check is a non-trivial task and it's not built into the tool, which was weird. Also has to be able to monitor all the things that I care about. Um, 
So InfluxDB monitored all the things I cared about. It was really easy to set up. It's a single Debian or RPM package from a third-party repository. Pretty simple for most Linux administrators. It has one GUI to rule them all. It is the same GUI for the dashboards. It's the same GUI for managing authentication tokens. It's the same GUI for looking at documentation. It's the same GUI for poking around the database. Uh, and that's another thing. Poking around the database doesn't require any use of the keyboard really uh you can do everything through there or you can get most of the way through with the WYSIWYG editor you might have to tweak some things and add a variable or two but it makes it much more accessible from a linux guru who knows functional programming to the linux guru who's super lazy or the tier one tech or your manager it gives them the ability to kind of fumble through the database pretty well uh, it also requires authentication to do anything, even to read from the database. You do have to have an authentication token or password. And the very first thing you do when you install Influx is set up your user account and your initial tenant. So why Telegraph? Short answer, it's one agent to rule them all. It's also made by Influx Data and it's supported by multiple vendors. Uh, I believe Mist.io deploys it for their monitoring system and it's deployed in, for Azure as well. It's really nice to know that it's like a very mature open source project and that it can take data from all these different inputs. It can take in log, uh, it can take in things like CPU, it can take in traces, it can even uh, take syslog and forward it off to a number of different databases, not just in FluxDB. So what do I do to make these tools useful? I essentially take InfluxDB, which is pretty much a toy without the batteries, and I put the batteries in, or make it much easier to put the batteries in. Um, the biggest thing is setting it up initially is I have an Ansible rule that will install InfluxDB in Nginx, and I also have a template that has a whole bunch of dashboards and alerts and variables that are all set up for you. And to get data in, uh, I have an Ansible rule for Linux. I have a PowerShell script for Windows host that you can push through an RMM. <coughs> Excuse me. And I do also have a shell script for Linux. It's not as good as the Ansible rule because it can't do service discovery yet, but it's still there. It will also help you set up Telegraph for other platforms too, such as PFSense, OpenSense, and Proxmox. And if all of that's really hard for you to figure out or you need uh, some custom work done, more than welcome to help you with that. So now we get to go to the demo. So what this will do here, and you can see I've ran this earlier, is it will reach out to all the hosts and deploy the telegraph rule. So if these hosts didn't have Telegraph, it would add the repository and install them. In this case, it's just going to make sure everything's good and restart Telegraph just in case there was a config change. But while that's going, we get to look at some pretty dashboards. As you can see, there's a ton of different platforms in here. Windows, Linux, Nginx, Proxmox, all that other stuff, or a whole bunch of other stuff. My personal favorite one is Proxmox. As you can see, uh, you can get CPU, RAM, load. You can see uh, if there's any IO weight, which is really handy. And along with being able to see the global statistics, you can see the individual statistics for each host. So that way you can, again, see if it's a global issue. Is it just that host? Is it just that guest? It's really nice. Uh, another nice thing is it can do what's called black box monitoring, which is looking at things the way a user would. So instead of having this backend knowledge of having Telegraph or in Proxmox, Proxmox's case, the native integration, it will query the server for you just as a user would and make an HTTP request and give you the response time too, which is really handy. Um, and another nice thing is that you can fumble through the database yourself 
I uh, kind of already have a query here, but if I wanted to do it from scratch, let's say I wanted to see what was the average uh, load on this PFs or this OpenSense box. As you can see, we can see this number over time, and we can even change the type of visualization is to a gauge, which doesn't really make that much sense or a gauge in a single stat. So that way we can get, uh, this is actually one of my favorite ones where you could see what the average is and you could see what the average was over time as well, which is really handy. And now if we come back to here, we can see that uh, Telegraph was deployed to all these agents and we can find some of them in the Linux dashboard as well. And we can see all the services running on the machine, what the machine is running, the load statistics. Uh, one cool integration is, is it works with a tool called Mesh Central where you can click on this link and it will take you over to a remote access tool. I do plan on integrating this with Cockpit at some point. And if you wanna contribute that, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so how can you help the project? You can contribute data from real life production hardware, preferably. If you're comfortable with sending that data over, we, we over at Shift Systems can kind of work on everything and build out visualizations. Uh, testing is another thing. Install it on your own infrastructure, use it to monitor and see if we're missing anything or if we're doing anything wrong, please let us know on GitLab. And another big thing is we do take donations via PayPal. This is really hard work and it really helps to be compensated for it. I'll be in chat with any questions. Thanks again for having me itself and have a great rest of your day.